Take a look at the timber on that axle, Chris. You know, we got some wheels down the line are so dried out they're ready to fall apart. Yeah, well, all right, Bill. Well, that's it, folks. We're going to camp right here until we get these wagons in shape. Every one of them. Before we hit the mountains. That's a good country for it, Chris. Lots of timber, good hunting and fishing. I'm for a hunting party. What about the mail, Mr. Chris? The folks are getting mighty anxious. Now, I can ride over to Washburn and... Well, I'm mighty obliged, Charlie, but I don't think so. I know of a shortcut. Over that New Overland Trail. I'll be back before you know it. <laughs> well, so could Coop. He knows about that shortcut, too, you know. But you're right, we have been out of touch for a long time. So you might as well get saddled up, Coop. Right, Chris. Wait a minute. What's the matter with me? It was my idea, Mr. Chris. Well, it wouldn't be because I'd miss your cooking, you know. This part of the country's crawling with hostile Indians, outlaws. They'd murder you for the clothes on your back. Now, we'll let Coop handle it. That's his job. I'll try not to miss your cooking, Charlie. Everybody steals my ideas. Coop? Mind if I give you the usual warning about wine, women, and poker? Not at all, Chris. Like you said, we've been out of touch. Chris, why don't you let me uh, go along with him and keep him out of trouble? And who'd keep you out of trouble? Well, I'd be glad to, Mr. Chris. <laughs> <laughs> It's all right, ma'am. I'm not one of them. Liar! I saw you up there. I saw you kill him. No, ma'am. Stand still. Don't make me use this. I know how. Turn around. I said stand still. Now, get those horses out of here. Oh, easy now. All right, climb up. Now, climb up. I just as soon kill you as not. All right, get going.
sheared off back at the pass. Get the horses unharnessed. We'll continue on horseback. Look, ma'am, it'll be a Do lot easier. Do as I say. Understand how you feel, but you're wrong about me. Now get that through your head. I'm going to unhitch the team, or we're going to turn around and head back. I'm not going anywhere with you. Gets pretty cold out here at night. Why are you being so stubborn? Has anybody hurt you yet? What do I have to do to convince you I'm not one of those men? Are you trying to talk me out of something I saw with my own eyes? The man you saw rode off. The man I saw came walking down to the coach after my gun jammed and started going for a dead man's pocket. So would you. I was looking for identification to turn in at the stage at Washburn. All you saw was a man's forehead, the sight of his face, the blur of his shirt. I'll bet you can't tell me what those men wore or the color of their hair. I saw you. Are you sure? If we get started pretty quick, we can make the wagon train by noon tomorrow. Look, miss, you're stuck out here with me anyway. What do you got to lose? That's better. You got a name? Barbara. Barbara Lindquist. Come on over to the fire and try some of that rabbit. See that? Let me see. Taken in at the shoulder, don't it, ma'am? Just tonight. Oh, you ain't had no supper. Help yourself, there's plenty left. Are you too worried about hubby? He's not my husband. Oh, no? What's he doing here? We broke down. I'm driving the stage. So you're awake already, eh? <laughs> you got a hard head. But a bullet will blow it clean off, so you just... You just lie there real quiet like, huh? Don't I know you from someplace? Not that I know of. Yes, I do. How long have you been driving that stage? A couple years. Oh, it was less than that. It was through here last year, with the wagon train. Johnny, you remember him? He hired us on to pull the wagons through the mud, and then run us off the place because he thought we were stealing. <laughs> what have we here? Making eyes. 
I ain't seen nothing but squaws for a long time. And I get jealous. Johnny! Don't drink that stuff, you'll end up a drunkard. Oh, well, we don't ever say nothing. Born with a forked tongue. Best partner ever had. Well, let's see what we got here. Please, those are just a few of my personal things. Property of Barbara Lindquist, Boston, Mass. Long way from Boston. Well, it's not a long way from Fort Gordon. Who's at Fort Gordon? My fiance. And my father, General Lindquist. Well, Sergeant Jed Frazier at your service, miss. Ain't never had the pleasure of serving under old iron pants Lindquist, but he's a much loved man. Mister, you want that stuff, you take it. Just leave us a couple horses to get back to the wagon train. We won't say anything about it. Well, now, I'd uh, like to oblige, but you know how the general must be worrying about his daughter. I may be a deserter, but I just wouldn't feel right until I brought the daughter of old Iron Pants Lindquist back to Fort Gordon, personally. I got you into this. It's all my fault. I should have believed you. You had no way of knowing. I should have listened. I knew I'd find it. Yeah. Powdered ink, too. Bring me that canteen. I think... You ought to write the general a billy do <laughs> and tell him how the stage got wrecked, how I found you, and what good care I'm taking of you. How I'm uh, going out of my out of my way to take you back to the fort. Now you think I ought to have a just reward? Say uh, five hundred dollars in greenbacks. Or uh, ten ounces of gold dust. Whichever he can scare up easiest. Well, you don't know my father. He won't give you one cent. He'll have all his troopers out gunning for you. Oh, I don't think so. Not so long as I'm taking care of the apple of his eye. <laughs> Besides, the army's been looking for me for a long time. Well, what are you waiting for? On your feet.
about Gordon that the general sent him. They spot that stager. Aren't you going to tell a lady where you're taking her? Well, legging it like this, it'll take at least a week to get to the fort. Five days back to the wagon train. So it looks like it's the wagon train. Well, even five days. We don't have much food, and, and you don't have a gun. We'll just have to make do. Sound just like Alan. Your fiance. No matter how hard things get, he won't complain. <laughs> you strong men aren't as strong as you think you are. Where did you meet him? In Washington, at the War College. He was assigned to come west with Dad and serve as his adjutant. It's scary to have all the men in your life in the same place. Especially in a country like this. You gonna marry him? Yes. Yes, I am. Anyone would have told me a few weeks ago that I would be alone in the desert with a dark, handsome stranger playing Florence Nightingale. You know what I would have told them? <gasps> I wonder what Alan's doing right now. Am I being unfair bringing his name up all the time? No, of course not. I think I am. Are you just getting over someone? No. Have you ever been in love? Yeah, once. And what happened? Just didn't work out. Because you wanted it not to. More or less. Coop, I expected to find men out here brutalized by their environment. And I must say they've lived up to expectations. You're intelligent, well-informed, and warm, friendly. Would you please tell me how you can live your life in this desolation of nothing but chalk dust and red-hot sun and sudden death? It's not all that bad, Barbara. It's worse. It's the only life I know. But why? Why, if you can live in a modern city with a place of your own and a wife to be waiting for you? It's kind of hard to explain. 
See, I figure it this way. Death waits at the end of every man's trail. Some folks try to get it as far out of their mind as they can. Some of us gotta wrestle with the Grim Reaper. We can't help it. We gotta feel that tingle down our spine and the dry swallow and the blood run cold. You see, we figure if we're not ready to meet death at every hollow and face him down, we wasted being born. That's awful. I hope my sons never feel that way. All women say that. And all men know better. I'm glad that handsome stranger is you. took very little, Coop, honestly. It's all right. You didn't know. gonna make it, Barbara. Do you hear me? It's just a little longer now. A little longer. You've been saying that for hours. Will you keep going? Will you please keep going? Just a little longer. There's a spring in that outcropping up above. How do you know? This water has to get here from somewhere. Come on, let's go find it. Oh, 
all right. It's all right. It's all right, Barbara. Oh, come on. No, I can't. Come on. Keep moving. Come on. Teachers that Miss Bennett's told us? No, what? That the absence of pain was a pleasure. We all hooted. But you know she was right. <sighs> Will you look at me sloshing around in this muddy water thinking it's heaven? Come here, Barbara. I want to draw you a map of the trail ahead. It's going to mean learning a dozen turns and a hundred landmarks. So we're going to take it a little at a time. Oh, I'm not very good at that kind of thing. I, I've no sense of direction. I get lost in a Boston garage. Anyhow, you'll be with me. Be a lot better if we played it safe. All right, here's our position now. I want you to watch this close. Oh, Barney. Oh, Barney, that's salt country. How many times do I have to tell you? Yeah, Bill. Left fork. Left fork, Bill. I told you before, left fork. Chris! I, I, I can't stand it, Chris. I can't stand the pain anymore, Chris. It hurts. You gotta take it from me, Chris. Chris. Wake up, please. Chris. Come. Chris. Where are you? Feeling better? We'll stay here for a couple of days to give you a chance to get your strength back. Then we'll start. No, Barbara. I can't make it with this leg. You know the trail ahead. You're gonna have to go on without me. Mm -mm. Now, we talked about this before. What about you? I'll be all right. There's enough here to last me for a while. I'm not going. You've got to go. Now go on. It's the only chance to save both of us. But I only learned to find the wagon train by the Mark Trail. The Mark Trail's easy to find. You just go due west. Follow the sun and you'll run right into it. Yes, but, but how do I find you again? Remember the landmarks? Our little stream. And the rocks and these trees. Now go on, don't waste any more time. Hundreds of rocks and trees and streams just like this. I'd never find you again. Go on. Don't worry about me. Yeah, you're coming with me. At least as far as the Mark Trail. No. Please, Coop. Look, you wouldn't be lying here like this if it weren't for me. Get up. No. No. I said get up. 
can't you at least try? I can't. I try to turn over. It's like moving a ton of dead weight. Well, if you got the circulation going, at least move your leg, you'll be all right. You're just giving in to it. Giving in to it? That's what I said. It's so easy, isn't it? Just to lie there and die. Just go to sleep and nature will take care of the rest. Pioneers. Indestructible. Ten feet tall. Oh, give me soggy crackers and Boston milk. And thanks for coming to the stagecoach. Yeah. Now I'll have those glassy eyes of yours staring at me for the rest of my life wherever I go. He saved me and I left him on the trail. You certainly are leaving behind a lot of beautiful memories, aren't you? Where'd you find me, Chris? On the Leghorn. Miss Lindquist led us to you. It was gonna hurt a little. How is it? It's too early to tell. I can tell. I've seen enough of them. It's got to the bone and the knee. And bones and knees heal. Sure. But don't ever try bending them again. <clears throat> Now, what's the use arguing about it? I'm gonna lose it anyway. Where should I be? Fort Gordon with your fiance. A few more days won't matter. Why are you so eager to be rid of me? I don't want you staying around here if you think you owe me something. Why don't you eat your soup? I'm not hungry. Eat it anyway. Now, who asked you to mother me? I volunteered. I was hoping for the chance to shoot up your other leg. out a lot of phony pity. You make this? Mm-hmm. 
I thought so. It's terrible. How would you know? The only thing you're used to is pork and ashes seasoned with sand. You better watch out. I'll quote you to Wooster. <laughs> what you said to Chris when they brought you in. And I watch you lying here day after day, gazing out into space. I know what you're thinking. But you're not going to lose your leg. And even if you can never use it again, it isn't the worst thing that ever happened. You make it sound good. I mean it. This is the only way you'll ever change. How long can you go on being a scout, hanging on by the skin of your teeth? Isn't it about time that you go out into the real world and make a place for yourself? Get married, raise a family, become a man amongst men? What if a man was born under an open sky? Hunted buffalo on the plains and antelope in the forest. Caught mountain trout out of a stream for breakfast. What if a man spent his life on a horse and now he can't ride anymore? He'd find other things to do. Like what? Well, all sorts of things. Name some. Well, like learning and reading and listening to music, really listening. And what if he doesn't care for those things? He'd make himself care. I'll tell the man when I see him. Now, if you don't mind, I'm tired. I'd like to get some sleep. Thanks for the soup. Just another summer soldier. And I thought you were more than that. Much more. I got your message. I'll turn myself inside out. Look, you got somebody else to take care of. Why don't you go find him? Leave me alone. That would be just fine with me. That's your double bazaque. Oh. Coop doesn't seem much better. Oh, he's coming along just fine. What's going to happen to him, Miss Lindquist? <sighs> Everything's going to work out. Excuse me, uh, Miss Lindquist. You suppose you could tear yourself away from this? Hard shark for a couple of minutes. <laughs> Will you excuse me? Well, if you promise to come back. <clears throat> Sit down. <laughs> Can it be as bad as that? <laughs> oh, I, I'm uh, just wondering about your plan. I haven't any. Well, uh, I understand you have a fiance in Fort Gordon. You're not going back there? No. May I uh, ask why? I think you know why, Mr. Hale. Well, I know how you've taken care of Coop, how much attention you've given him. But I'm wondering if perhaps it isn't a little misguided. We can look out for him. You don't have to stay here to act as nursemaid. Nursemaid? He threw away his life for me. Not once, but twice. You're doing this because you owe Coop something? I owe him everything. But it's more than that. Much, much more. You love him? <laughs> Please don't use that complicated word. I'm not sure that I know what that means anymore. I think you do. Do you love him? Mr. Hale, because of me, he'll never use his leg again. You know how he is. He'll just shrivel up in a corner and die. You still haven't answered the question. Yes. Yes, I do.
All right, Miss Lindquist. Ready to roll? something, Barbara. I've made up my mind. I'm leaving the West. That's a big step for you, Coop. I know it is. But I just plain can't stand to watch them working the wagons and seeing the men riding all day when I can't even keep up with a mud turtle. This life's over for me. I, I've got to put it behind me. But what will you do? I don't know. That's what I wanted to ask you. What would a beat-up wagon train scout like me do back east? Anything you put your mind to. Like what? You got any ideas? Well, there are any number of businesses. Uh, outfitting wagon trains, selling prospecting equipment, breeding horses, importing pelts. I don't have very much saved up. How would a man go about getting started? Well, I would say that the first thing he should do is to get himself a good wife. I know why you're doing this. You are the most miserable man that walked this earth. You really are. Barbara. Would a pretty girl like you really burden herself for the rest of her life with a cripple? Oh, Coop. I love you. I take you with two game legs. Congratulations, Coop. Good luck to you. Thanks, Bill. Congratulations, Coop. Thank you, Barney. I know you'll make her very happy. You know, if you ever change your mind, Barney, I'd be happy to go back to Boston to your place, you know. Aren't you going to wish me luck? You know I do. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I bet when we get back east to see old Coop, we'll find him sitting behind one of them roll top desks. Big cigar in his mouth, issuing orders for a roll of clerks with them green eye shades on. <laughs> You know, Charlie, when a man finally decides to become a family man, he shouldn't be chasing wagons across the country year after year. Yeah. Well, they, they say there's always a lot to do in Boston. Oh, yes. Theaters, concerts, variety shows. Say, and fine eating places, too. Now, you take Mike Flaherty's. They tell me he's got a menu. Take a fast read man a half a day to read through it. <laughs> You're good friends. But it'll be all right. Coop and I both know that it won't be easy, but I'll be right there, and I know that he'll come to love it. I'm sure he will. When are you all traveling? We're planning on catching a stage at Washburn. Before you do any traveling with that leg, Coop, I want a doctor from Washburn to look you over. Be there tomorrow. Well, what do we all stand around for like a bunch of dumb Doris? Let's drink a toast to the bride and groom. <laughs> Everybody. Darling, there's nothing to worry about. I'm sure that you're well enough to start back. I know. Well, there's nothing you can tell you about your leg that you haven't already faced. It's one thing to kind of know, and another to have it signed and sealed officially. Dr. Everest, this is Cooper Smith, the fellow I was telling you about. I do. Miss Lindquist. Lindquist? Well, I'd better be getting back to my chores. Good luck. I'll see you later. Let's see what these reflexes are. This ain't gonna hurt. All right. Hold on a minute. You feel that? A little. Well, all right. No good, is it, Doc? Well, six months, a year ago, I'd say you're right. You're going to be a cripple for life, so get used to the idea. But now, with these 
new medicines and the right kind of exercises, I'd say you got yourself a real good chance of walking on that leg again. I do. Now, hold on. It's not going to be easy. It's going to take hours and hours. I don't care how long it takes. Oh, you'll care plenty. You've got to educate a whole new set of muscles and nerves. By the time you're through, you'll want to give up a hundred times. This is going to hurt you so bad, you'll cry like a baby. Doc, if I can walk, I can ride, can't I? <laughs> I don't see why not. Barbara! 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 The doctor says I'm going to be all right. All right. Yeah, I can walk, ride, anything. Chris! Charlie! Bill! I'm going to be all right. You hear me? Oh, it's wonderful, marvelous. We'll get you the best bone surgeon in Boston. Boston? Yes, we're going there, aren't we? We've got the tickets. I posted the letters. Everybody's expecting us. I don't have to go any place now. This is something I got to do myself. We'll be happy there, I promise you. I can do better here, Barbara. You know that. I was willing to try your life. Aren't you willing to try mine? Why, yours? Look what this country's done to you. And to me. Three men killed before my eyes. Isn't that enough? And what we went through? Why do you want me to stay here? What do we owe this, this desert waste, this, this land of nothing but constant terror and death? Barbara, there's land waiting and water and sunshine for us. Roads to be made, forests to cut down, a whole country to put up. And it's not going to be easy. That's why I got to be part of it. You're throwing your life away on a dream. No, I'm living it. I can feel it in every wagon coming across the divide. Coop, I do love you. I really do. Please, please forgive me for this. I can't live here. I just can't make myself stay. Please come back. Please. Coop, there's still time. I gotta tell you this, Coop. Any man who trades his horse for a rockin' cherry is a born fool. Coop. Fess up. She didn't say that about that pork and ashes seasoned with sand, did she? Did she? No, Charlie. She didn't. 